In a bold statement against social inequality and climate change, the Spanish climate activist group Futuro Vegetal vandalized Lionel Messi's $12 million mansion in Ibiza. The protest, aimed at drawing attention to the carbon footprint of the wealthy, saw the activists breach Messi's property, covering it in red and black paint. They unfurled a banner reading, Help the planet, eat the rich, abolish the police, highlighting their frustration with the affluent's role in the climate crisis. The group posted footage of the break-in on Instagram, showing two members spraying the mansion's white facade and posing in the garden. Futuro Vegetal condemned Messi's villa, calling it an illegal construction, purchased for 11 million euros. They criticized the extreme right wing for blaming the climate crisis on immigrants, arguing that social inequality is the true issue. Futuro Vegetal's actions were grounded in a 2023 Oxfam report, which indicated that the richest 1% of the world's population produced as much carbon emissions in 2019 as the poorest two-thirds. Despite this disparity, the most vulnerable communities suffer the most severe consequences of climate change. Lionel Messi, currently playing for Inter Miami, bought the Mediterranean property in 2022. The villa, which features a spa and a cinema room, reportedly lacks a certificate of occupancy due to unlicensed construction. Argentina's president, Javier Malay, expressed his support for Messi and his family, calling on the Spanish government to ensure the safety of Argentine citizens. Malay condemned the act as a cowardly and delusional event driven by envy and hatred towards the successful. This incident is not Futuro Vegetal's first high-profile protest. In 2022, they glued their hands to paintings by Francisco de Goya at Madrid's Prado Museum and spray-painted a superyacht owned by Walmart heiress Nancy Walton Laurie in Ibiza. And here are this week's most interesting news. Italian swimmer Thomas Cecon expressed his frustration with the Olympic Village's conditions, choosing to nap outside under a park bench. This unusual decision followed his public criticism of the village's facilities, highlighting a lack of air conditioning and inadequate food. Saudi Arabian rower Hussein Ali Reza captured Chekhan's outdoor rest in a widely circulated social media post, which read, Rest today, conquer tomorrow. Chekhan's discontent comes despite his early success, having won a gold medal in the men's 100m backstroke and a bronze in the men's 4x100m freestyle relay. However, he failed to qualify for the final in the men's 200m backstroke. His complaints echo those of other athletes at the Games, who have also noted subpar conditions. While many competitors continue to persevere, Chekin's choice to sleep outside stands out, even if it didn't seem to boost his performance, as he missed another relay final on the same day. And if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on all notifications so you don't miss our upcoming video. Algerian Olympic boxer Iman Khalif has called for an end to the negativity and hatred directed at athletes, emphasizing the severe impact it can have on individuals. In an interview with SNTV, the 25-year-old addressed the controversy surrounding her gender, which has led to international debate. Khalif questioned why her gender is being scrutinized now after years in the sport, but remains focused on winning a gold medal at the 2024 Paris Games. She passionately urged the public to uphold the Olympic principles and refrain from bullying, as it can destroy spirits and divide people. Despite the controversy, Khalif expressed gratitude towards the International Olympic Committee for their support, particularly after the International Boxing Association questioned her eligibility for last year's World Championships without specifying the reasons. As she prepares to face Thailand's Jan Jaim Suanafung, Khalif hopes her family is not too affected by the situation and believes that excelling in her sport is the best way to combat the negativity. She is guaranteed at least a bronze medal in the competition. In a heartwarming moment at the 2024 Summer Olympics, American gymnasts Simone Biles and Jordan Chiles paid tribute to Brazilian gymnast Rebecca Andrade during the podium ceremony following the floor exercise. As Andrade celebrated her gold medal victory, Biles and Chiles graciously bowed, allowing the spotlight to shine on the deserving champion. Andrade's journey to this triumph has been marked by resilience, having endured three separate ACL tears throughout her career. The most recent injury limited her participation in the Tokyo Games, where Brazil couldn't qualify as a team, although she achieved individual success. This year, Andrade made the most of her time at the Olympics, not only securing gold in the floor exercise but also contributing to Brazil's bronze medal in the team all around. The podium celebration captured the respect and camaraderie among the athletes, 
highlighting Andrade's incredible comeback and perseverance. Her victory was a testament to overcoming adversity and was celebrated by fans and fellow competitors alike, making it a memorable moment of the Games. Rihanna made a dazzling return to the 2024 Crop Over Festival in Barbados, captivating the crowd with her stunning outfit. The 36-year-old Grammy winner showcased a bejeweled full-body costume, adorned with jewels and accompanied by vibrant, feathered wings in pink, orange, and yellow. The ensemble was complemented by a matching headpiece, adding to her radiant appearance. This marked her first appearance at the festival since 2019, following the pandemic and the birth of her two children. Rihanna's arrival caused a stir, as crowds flocked to catch a glimpse of the Fenty beauty founder. Flanked by members of the Barbados military, her entourage included security armed with assault rifles to manage the enthusiastic fans. Known for her bold and stylish outfits at the festival, a 200-year-old tradition celebrating the end of the sugar cane season, Rihanna's 2024 look was particularly eye-catching. Her return to the festival was a major moment, reminding everyone of her iconic presence and style. I need to put people, the Freddy Dope Smile Oh my god, look at Rihanna Barbie a superstar. Woo! Rihanna! Oh no, look at Woo! Rihanna! Ri oh my god! Ri Rihanna looked too sick. Oh my god! Woo! The crowd rushing, the crowd rushing! Vice President Kamala Harris has selected Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as her running mate for the upcoming election, sparking widespread support from prominent Democrats. Harris announced the decision on social media, praising Waltz's diverse background as a governor, coach, teacher, and veteran, highlighting his commitment to working families. Harris's choice was endorsed by key figures, including former President Barack Obama, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and Speaker Emeritus Nancy Pelosi. President Joe Biden also praised the selection, calling Waltz a strong, principled, and effective leader. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, a former 2020 presidential candidate, lauded Harris's choice, describing Waltz as humble and likening him to a burly football coach, a fitting figure to challenge Donald Trump. Klobuchar emphasized Waltz's military experience and his work on agricultural policy, as well as his genuine, unscripted communication style that resonates with many. She also defended his handling of the 2020 racial justice protests in Minneapolis, noting his rejection of calls to defund the police. The Harris-Waltz ticket promises to champion working people and uphold America's democratic values. The duo is set to kick off the campaign with a rally in Philadelphia, marking the start of a tour through key battleground states. Following a disputed election result in Venezuela, thousands of protesters clashed with security forces in Caracas. The demonstrations erupted after President Nicolás Maduro claimed victory, despite opposition candidate Edmundo González allegedly winning with 73.2% of the vote. Opinion polls had predicted a clear victory for González, as opposition parties united to challenge Maduro's 11-year rule amid a severe economic crisis. The protests saw a heavy presence of military and police forces attempting to disperse crowds and prevent them from reaching the presidential palace. Protesters chanted freedom, freedom and set fires, with footage showing burning tires and overturned cars. Some demonstrators tore down and burned posters of Maduro. Venezuelan authorities announced the suspension of commercial flights to and from Panama and the Dominican Republic, effective from 2000 local time on Wednesday. In a televised speech, Maduro called for calm and criticized the opposition for inciting violence. Protesters expressed frustration, with many young people, particularly those unemployed, calling for change and a better future for the country.